right, what should I take today? Uh, too many wheels. Oh, Miley, you got the right idea. Oh, pint or XR. So I could take the pint, which is pretty light, easy to carry around, super maneuverable on that small curved tire, but I'll probably only get around eight miles out of that. I could take the XR and get like 18 miles. It's a little bit faster, but it's such a hassle to lug around something that weighs like 30 pounds. I just wish there was something like in between, you know? Yeah, I know. Hey, wait, what's that behind you? Is that a tennis ball? Oh, look at this little guy. What do you think, Miley? Can you throw it real quick? I swear I'll bring it right back. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things and I've got an exciting video for you guys today. Yesterday morning at around 11 a.m. Mountain Time, I was sitting at my desk getting some work done, answering emails, and I got a notification reminder for a one-wheel live event. They titled this event Uncharted and it was very apparent that they were about to release some new products. No one really knew what it was. I had my suspicions, but I wasn't going to jump the gun and like predict anything. So if you caught that event, you will know that One Wheel has just released two brand new boards. One of them being their new flagship, the One Wheel GT. I would highly recommend checking out that event coverage if you haven't already. Essentially, the GT is their biggest, baddest board that they've put out now with a 32 mile range. How do you even ride a One Wheel that long without your legs just like completely falling apart? They've added a lot of new cool features to that thing like 300% brighter LEDs so you are seen better and you can see better when riding in low light or at night. They've added some new foot pads, new foot pad technology, and there's just a ton of really awesome stuff going into that new board, including a new tire, which is one thing that I'm definitely stoked on trying. Before they announced the GT though, they released this right here. I'm currently riding the brand new Pint X. This thing came in a new limited launch color, which is like tennis ball green. You guys know I like all black everything, but I'm actually really loving this colorway. So let's talk about the Pint X today and what it's all about. The One Wheel Pint was a great addition to the One Wheel lineup, and if you've watched my video of the original one in the past, you will know everything that I love about it. It's about 20% smaller overall than the XR, and previously it had a range of about seven to eight miles. One of the things that I love about the original Pint is how portable it is compared to the XR. I loved the tire. It was a little bit narrower, which gave you a little bit more maneuverability in some urban environments. So One Wheel took everything that was good about the Pint, and then also a lot of things that are great about the XR and combined them into what you see right here, the Pint X. So the Pint X is sort of a light refresh when comparing to the brand new GT. Essentially, it is the same form factor as the Pint, but with closer to XR specs. With the new battery array that they somehow crammed into this thing, they're giving you a range of up to 18 miles. They've also bumped up that top speed to about 18, which in my opinion is the sweet spot. It would be cool to have a super fast one wheel, but obviously if you guys know about pushback, you really gotta respect that. So going over 20 miles an hour gets a little bit sketchy. I'm super happy with the 18 mile per hour upgrade that they put into the Pint X, and I'm excited to see how it will perform out on the streets. So here we are out on our first ride on the new one wheel Pint X, and there are so many good things to say about this board and the new GT, of course. I'm gonna be testing out all of the different modes today. I'm currently riding in Redwood mode, and we've already gone about three miles, which would be almost half of the battery life of the original Pint. This one, of course, has the refresh batteries, giving you 12 to 18 miles, so that is what I'm really gonna be testing today. And I have no idea where I'm even going right now. So 
Everything thus far seems super familiar to me because I'm used to riding the pint quite a bit. I started the testing in the Redwood mode, and if you know anything about the different mode selections on one wheel, there's a bunch of different things that you can pick from, and there's also a custom shaping mode so you can change the dynamic of the board, how quickly it accelerates, how loose and carvy it feels. Right now I'm currently in the Pacific X mode, which is like the second mode up. If I roll to a stop here, let's see what's next. We have an elevated X mode, which is good for going up hills. This is probably my least favorite mode because of the angle of the nose. The board sits up a little bit higher. I'm going up a little bit of a hill right now, but there aren't many situations where I'm constantly going uphill where I use this mode. So let's see what the top is. I should also mention that they do have simple stop on all of these modes, and basically what that is is an easier way to dismount. If I rock backwards, the board deactivates and it allows you to step off like that. Now, new mode, Skyline X. Go full pocket rocket with Skyline, responsive and punchy. It offers the ultimate experience for maximum sendability. So this is going to be the aggressive and more trail oriented version. Let's actually disable simple stop while we're at it. And now, let's go cruise. when I reviewed the original Pint, I was making comparisons between the Pint and the XR, and I mentioned that I couldn't really pick a favorite. After riding both the XR and the Pint for a while, I ended up making the decision that the XR was my favorite. Whenever I would leave town and go out on an adventure, and I didn't really know where my adventures were taking me, I would opt for the XR because it had a longer range and the wider tire allowed you to take it on trails just a little bit easier than the Pint. Now with the Pint X, because they combined the XR and the Pint, this is a smaller form factor, easier to bring around with me, especially when I'm traveling in a van and I have limited space, but it's giving me the distance of the XR. The XR is still better suited for trails because of the wider tire, but when I'm riding in an urban environment, I would opt for the Pint because it's a little bit more maneuverable. I actually really love the way that it feels. So the Pint X is essentially the best of both worlds of the previous generations of one wheels. Ooh, I'm riding it on some like narrow, rocky, weed covered trails and it's handling everything pretty damn well. Oh, tumbleweeds. <laughs> so I know this is just my first impression, but I would say that this is probably the best one wheel out right now. That is, of course, until the GT releases, and then that thing is just gonna trump everything. But from my testing so far, this thing has got the maneuverability, it's light, portable. Speaking of the weight, actually, I put this thing on a scale last night. The original one wheel pint is coming in at about 23 pounds. This one is coming in at 26.8. So it's about 3.8 pounds heavier than the original pint but it does come with the mag handle right out of the box, so it's still super easy to pick up and take with you if you're riding a bus, throwing it in your car, riding a train. I think the Pint X is pretty perfect for any kind of urban environment that you might throw at it.
back to the pavement. So I am currently at 8.95 miles on this trip and I just got the notification that the one wheel Pint X is at 50%. I turned around, I'm gonna make my way back home. We'll check out the absolute distance, how far the Pint X can go, and then I'll give you some of my final impressions. Alright guys, I'm back from my first ride on the one wheel Pint X and I don't know what one wheel did to this differently, maybe just because it's a brand new board, but they do not lie about their actual specs when it comes to range. A lot of electric vehicle companies sort of stretch this and I've mentioned it in other one wheel videos in the past. If I take a look at the one wheel app, I ended up going a distance of 19 miles and one wheel is advertising that this does 12 to 18 which is honestly on the conservative side of things i also had another gps app running called gaia and i also went 19 on there so total ride distance of 100 percent all the way down to about four percent when i started feeling pushback and then the board eventually died i went 19.1 miles on the pint x that type of range out of a tiny little board like this is just insane. That is so cool and they've basically just merged the Pint and the XR into this thing right here. And I'm gonna say hands down that this is my favorite board for now, until the GT comes out. So a few more things to add about the Pint X. You do still have the LED indicator on the top here. If I turn the board on, this will tell you if anything's wrong with the board, it will show you if you are I know, my one wheel app is telling me that it's dead. So you have a battery indicator here. If you do not have your feet properly placed on the board, you'll notice that the left side is lighting up. If I touch the right side, the right side is lighting up. So that transfers over from the pint, still has lights in the front and the rear. And you'll also notice here the battery compartment. This is how they actually extended the range of this thing. If you look at the bumpers here and the skids underneath, they are just a little bit wider than the actual pint. You'll notice on the side rails here, you have about maybe half an inch from the back all the way up to the front. The nose and the tail are a little bit bigger and that's how they crammed more batteries into this thing. The mag handle is always a nice touch because obviously you can carry this thing around with you and it does still fit into the other mounting solutions. They have a little plate that I throw in the back of my van and then this thing just sort of clips right into it and that way it doesn't roll around as I'm out there traveling. Now speaking of pushback, let's also look at the top speed. My top speed ended up being 16.4 miles per hour, so getting up there close to the advertised 18, but whenever I notice pushback, I always stop. I've never had a nosedive on one of these things, and you probably hear people in the one wheel community referring to pushback a lot. Essentially what that does is as you are riding like this, if the board is dying, or if you're going a little bit too fast, the nose will start to rise up on you a little bit, literally pushing you backwards, and that is the way the one wheel basically tells you, hey, you could keep going, but we're not gonna be able to keep you balanced past this speed or past this battery. So if you fight and push through that pushback, the board is not gonna be able to keep you balanced, and that is when you hear people slamming, nose diving, breaking wrists, smashing up their hands, all sorts of stuff like that. So I definitely respect the pushback and you guys should too. When I got down to about 4% on the battery life, it starts to push back saying, hey, you really need to charge this thing now. And then it gets to a point where it's pushing back so much that it is just easier to stop riding, get the thing charged, and then you're good to go in a little while. The thing with the Pint X is that the battery is so much bigger, it's more similar to the XR, of course. And with the little pint charger right here, it takes a while to get this thing charged up. The board came to me at about 30% charge and it took an hour or two, might have even been two and a half hours to get this thing fully charged. So if you are interested in one wheels, specifically the Pint X, one thing that I would recommend is picking up the Ultra Charger because you're gonna get a lot faster charge out of this thing and that means you can go out there and ride a lot sooner. Now one more thing I want to mention, I got the One Wheel website pulled up behind me here where you can find everything about these new boards. The Pint X is currently going for $1,400. The regular Pint is going for $1,050, so $1,050. The price of these boards always come up in conversation because unless you've ridden one, you probably can't really figure out why someone would pay X amount of dollars for a specific board. 
I was actually pretty surprised with the price point of $1,400 because I thought this might be priced a little bit more and the price of the GT2. I thought that they would put an even higher price tag on them. But if you've ridden a one wheel, I have never met someone who owns one and rides it around who has said, man, I just wish it wasn't so expensive. Once you get on one of these things and you get out there and you get the feeling for it, I don't even think about the price after that. Once you see how well they are built and how these can take a tumble, I let new people ride these all the time and I've seen my own personal boards like my Pint and my XR go flying down the street, rolling and tumbling and bouncing on the fenders. My one wheels have been thrashed, used and abused and I have not had a single problem with any of them. So you really get what you pay for. Now, if you guys have any questions about the Pint X, please let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you want to see me give my first impressions of the GT, whenever those become available, leave some likes on here, leave some comments down below. Are you guys stoked about the new one wheel lineup? I know I definitely am. Again, this is going to be my go-to board. I'm gonna be taking the Pint X on adventures with me now instead of my XR. And I'm excited to get this thing charged up so I can get out there and start riding some more. So again, any questions, let me know in the comments down below. If you are new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every week. Huge thank you to One Wheel for including me in the release of these products. That's all for today. Thank you guys for watching. I will talk to you in the next one.